filming on location today near the mouth of Alamo Canyon outside of Alamogordo, New Mexico at an elevation of about 4,530 feet and an ambient air temperature today of 104 degrees Fahrenheit, although frankly it feels like about 960 degrees Fahrenheit. Welcome to the desert. Hi folks, Dan with High Country back at you with another video. In our continuing quest for wild food, today we're going to be discussing cactus, and more specifically, the prickly pear cactus. Now, if you're not familiar with the name, you are probably familiar with the cactus. It's been in a million Western movies and television shows and grows widely across North America. Now, the prickly pear itself, like most true cactus, grows only in the Americas. Now, that is North, Central, and South America. In North America, it's generally confined to more sandy locations. Uh, you'll see it commonly in the western deserts of New Mexico, Arizona, Texas, Nevada, Utah, places like that. But it also grows as far north as Canada, and also along the east coast in North Carolina, and in the Midwest as far as Illinois. Now, it's also been transplanted to a number of places around the world as far away as Italy, Morocco, Ethiopia, and even Australia. Now, in America, it is used predominantly as an ornamental, although occasionally for food. However, in large parts of the world, it's been used as a fence line or property boundary due to its large thorns, hence the prickly and prickly pear. It's also an interesting source of food. So enough of the background, let's get to the cactus. Here you see a relatively large bed of prickly pear cactus, which will help give you some information about how it got its name. The leaves of the cactus, the paddles themselves, are one of the places it got its nickname of the paddle cactus. And they are also roughly pear-shaped, hence the prickly pear. The fruits that you see on the back cactus, the somewhat pinkish red fruits, are about midway through their development. And those are going to range from a yellowish orange to a burgundy or maroon, depending on where you are in the world and what species of particular prickly pear you're looking at. They were actually used in some cultures as a dye for fabric, and that's one of the reasons they were originally transported to Australia, was to establish a dye industry. Now, the cactus itself has some nutritional value. In three and a half ounces of prickly pear, uh, or roughly 100 grams, it's going to be about 88% water, about 10% carbohydrates, and about 1% each of fat and protein. Now, in that 100 uh, grams of prickly pear, you'll have about 9.6 grams of carbohydrates, about half a gram of fat, about 0.7 grams of protein. Now, in terms of vitamin content, prickly pear will contain A, B6, vitamin C, niacin, and riboflavin. And in terms of minerals, they'll be calcium, iron, magnesium, potassium, and zinc. So they do have nutritional as well as caloric value. So let's get in a little bit closer and take a better look at the prickly pear, shall we? I will give you a little information about how to harvest one of the paddles or leaves as well, although I'm not actually going to harvest one. Uh, quite frankly, I think the prickly pear pads are fairly terrible. I think they're mucilaginous and just not very good. And if we are down to eating prickly pear pads, it is truly a survival situation in my book. So I'm not gonna waste one by cutting it off and doing nothing with it. However, if you do wanna harvest one, you're simply going to use your foot or a stick or a knife to separate here at one of the joints. And it will not kill the cactus. The cactus will certainly grow back, but just separate at one of the joints, break it loose, and then stick a knife or a stick or something in the bottom. And then you'll wanna hold the paddle itself over a fire is generally the easiest way to do it and burn away the spines. Although if you're careful, you can simply use a knife to scrape away those needles, but you wanna make sure you get all of them because they are bad news. They are extremely long, they'll go deep into your flesh and they hurt quite a bit. So do be careful if you're going to harvest one. And then you can simply pan fry it, roast it, bake it, whatever you choose to do. But as I said, I think they're terrible and I'm not gonna waste a cactus by harvesting one. So let's move on to the fruits. All right, this actually had to be filmed in several stages over a period of months as the fruits developed in this through the spring and summer so that I could show you the evolution of these fruits and what it is exactly that you're going to be looking for. So you'll notice that right here, we have one of the early fruits. This is green and it is developed as a fruit, but it is not yet ripe or ready to eat. And that's what they're gonna look like in stage one so that you know what you're looking for. Now here is stage two. You'll notice the fruit looks very similar, but it is turning pink. That it means it is getting close to ripe and close to ready to eat. So that's the second stage. That's what you'll be looking for in, say, early to mid-summer. Now here is the third stage. 
you'll notice that it's a bright maroon or burgundy color, and that is when they are actually ready to eat. They are ripe and ready to take home with you. So we'll harvest a couple of these, get out of this blazing desert sun, and go back somewhere that's a little more hospitable. Now here's a little aside. It's not directly related to the prickly pear as food, but it may be beneficial to you in a survival situation. I'm not sure this will show up on camera, but the top of these are concave. They're indented, the top of these fruits. We did have a small rainstorm last night, and in the top of this, there are a few drops of water. Now, it's not going to be very much, but there are quite literally thousands of these fruits out here available. Collectively, it adds up to quite a bit of water, and it's water that you don't have to go and hunt for. So that's something to keep in mind if you're uh, out here harvesting prickly pear fruits. Now, I guess I should probably show you how to harvest as well. I believe I said in an earlier video, multi-tools are a handy thing to have, and here's one of the reasons why. These are cactus or spiny, and there are thousands of tiny little thorns on these fruits themselves known as glochids. They'll get into your skin, and you definitely don't want those in your skin. You certainly don't want them in your mouth and lips. I'll show you how to get rid of those later. But here's the easy way to harvest these. Just reach out, grab them with your multi-tool, break them right off. And let's see if I can show this now. There's that couple of drops of water laying in the top. So something to keep in mind. All right, let's prepare our cactus fruit for eating. Now, everywhere you see one of these little white spots is where the glochids are. Remember the miniature needles I was telling you about, the glochids? That's where they spring from. Now, there's a couple of ways to get rid of these. You can burn them off, which is the easiest way. You can scrape them off, which is a little bit tedious, or you can try and peel the fruit. Now, when you peel the fruit, you're liable to get some of those glochids in your hands, and that's a, it's a pain because they're very, very small and they're difficult to get out. So I find it to be the easiest to just simply burn them out. So what I like to do is just take a plain old cigarette lighter and just burn them. Now remember, you're not trying to cook the fruit. You're just trying to burn the glochids off. So just give it a good cooking everywhere there's one of those white spots. And cook those glochids off. And that's going to be all there is to it. It's really not complicated. Just make sure you get them all burned off because you don't want to get them in your mouth. All right, so let's cut one of these open so that you can sort of see what's inside one and you'll know what you're dealing with here. So I'm just going to cut it right down the middle so you can see what's inside. Now, that's what's inside. It's the seeds and the fruit. Now, the, the contents here, the little seedlings inside, I don't generally care to eat. They're not bad for you. They're just a little bit odd tasting. So what I normally like to do there is simply scrape those out of the way. Just get your knife blade and scrape them out of the way. I prefer to eat just the, the fruit of itself. So you get those out of your way, it'll improve the flavor. But again, this isn't difficult. You're just scraping them away. And that's what you're going to be left with. You're going to be left with sort of a miniature cantaloupe or avocado. It'll be hollow in the middle, and there'll be your coloring on the outside. And that's really all there is to it. So we'll just get all that out of the way. Then you're just going to take that and pop it into your mouth. Now, at different stages of ripeness, these little seeds that I've showed you here... And let me see if I can get that in the camera a little better. The seeds I've showed you here are going to be dark and very, very hard. You don't want to try and chew them up. Now, as I said, they're not going to hurt you. I just don't find them very flavorful. So what I normally do is just scrape them out. But you can also simply pop the cactus fruit in your mouth, chew it all up, and swallow them whole. It's not going to hurt you. They're not going to be of any detriment to your health. But from there, just pop in your mouth and eat away. And that's how you prepare cactus fruit. Well, folks, that's our episode on prickly pear cactus. I hope you've taken a little something away from it. Again, if you need to cook one of the prickly pear pads itself, just break one loose from the stalk, impale it on a stick, and then burn it over fire till the spines are gone. As I said, I'm not going to waste one because I think they're terrible. But I hope it's been beneficial to you, and I hope you've learned a little something from it. If you've enjoyed it, I hope you'll come back and see us again. I'm Dan from my country. We'll catch you next time.